Hello everybody, in this video we're gonna talk about how to find the zeros of a quadratic function. So what does this term zeros mean? Well, it takes us back to intercept form of a quadratic function. It says the x-intercepts of the graph of f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q, that's our intercept form, are p and q. So since the value of the function is zero when x equals p and x equals q, we call those numbers, p and q, the zeros of the function. So essentially it is, what is x when y is equal to zero, okay? So we can find this by graphing, if we wanted to graph the equation and just see where the x-intercepts are. Those are also the zeros of the function. Or we could use really any other method that we want to solve a quadratic, and in this video we're gonna use factoring, okay? So we're gonna find the zeros of the function or basically just an x value for which f of x or y is equal to zero. So we're gonna set each of these equal to zero. So we have f of x equals 4x squared minus 13x plus three. And we're gonna write this as zero equals 4x squared minus 13x plus three. Because remember, we wanna know what is x when y is zero. And that's basically what we're setting up here. So now we need to factor this and anytime a is not one, we can't just say, oh, what adds to b and multiplies to c? So we could think, okay, can we factor out this four? Well, we can't because 13 and three, four is not a factor. So there's a bunch of methods that you can use to factor a quadratic when a is not one. Here's the one that I use. So I draw myself a little x right here and I write a times c and b. So a is four, c is three, so that would be 12, and then b is negative 13. So now on the sides of my x here, I wanna write two numbers that add to negative 13 and multiply to 12, okay? So that's gonna be negative one and negative 12, right? Multiply those together, we get positive 12. Add them, we get negative 13. So now we're gonna solve now, or we're gonna factor this by grouping. So we're gonna split negative 13x into negative x and negative 12x, and we're gonna write it like this. Zero equals four x squared minus 12x minus x plus three. Now we can factor by grouping. So I'm gonna to group together my first two terms in my last two terms, and I'm gonna factor out the GCF. So we get zero equals four x times x minus three, and I'm gonna factor out a negative one to get x minus three. So the goal here is to get the same term in parentheses, and we did that, we got x minus three, and that is called our common binomial. So now we can factor that out. So now we can write this as zero equals x minus three times four x minus one. Now we have two expressions, it's in factored form, it's equal to zero, zero product property tells us we can set those equal to zero and solve. So we get x minus three equals zero, so x is equal to three, and here we have four x minus one is equal to zero, so we can add that one and divide by four, and we get zero, x is equal to one fourth, or 0 0.25, okay? So those are our two zeros of the function, so that would be like three comma zero, and 0 0.25 comma zero. All right, and that's how we can find the two zeros of number one. For number two, we're gonna do the same thing, set it equal to zero. And now we're going to factor on the right side. Well, here we can factor out just an x, and we get x plus 11, and now we can set each of those equal to zero. So the first one we get x is equal to zero, which means zero is a zero of the function. It crosses at the origin. And we have x plus 11 equals zero. So we can subtract 11 to get x equals negative 11. So those are our two zeros. So we have zero, zero, and negative 11, zero. Okay, and that's how you can find the zeros of a quadratic function. <laughs> 